Well, good morning and happy Tuesday, Riverview Church. My name is Justin, one of the pastors. I have the privilege and honor of leading the charge at our Rio Town venue. Now, I'm coming at you live from my backyard in front of our glorious play structure here, frankly, because my kids are too loud inside. So I just came in my backyard, sat up in a lawn chair. But anyways, I wanted to give you a reflection today. Uh, from John 12. Um, we've been tracking along with Jesus in, in the Easter week and in, in the Passion week where we've been thinking about um, who he was and what he's done and what that means for us. And there's this, this uh, reflection I've had as I've been uh, thinking about how we can either seek the approval of people or God and how that, that affects our well-being, how we live our life, and just the, the assurance and, and the, the, the different foundations that we can build on. I'll just uh, get at it here because it is absolutely profound. Uh, the context is that Jesus has already had his triumphal en entry. Uh, there, there, there are hits out on his life. The religious establishment wants to, to get him, yet Jesus keeps keeping. He's preaching, he's teaching, he's pointing people to salvation. He has set himself um, towards the cross. His face is set like flint. And this is what it says. Even though he had performed so many signs in their presence, they did not believe in him. And so you're going to see this scene um, that some people believe, some people don't believe. Uh, just like today, Jesus is... Uh, unmistakably showing himself as the Messiah, and some people are not going to believe. He fulfills Isaiah's prophecy in a few verses down in verse 44. It says, Nevertheless, many did believe in him, even among the rulers, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him. And so, again, this scene is some people believe, some people don't. And those that do believe, the believers, are struggling to be public about their faith because there's, there's a social stigma, there's a social cost that's involved. The Pharisees this powerful, corrupt religious establishment um, could expel them from the synagogue so that they would not be banned from the synagogue. They didn't want to have a distance from people and one caused by Jesus. And, and the reason they had, a, they had trouble here, and this is the crux of what I'm getting at, is for they loved human praise more than the praise from God. Now, when I read that, I don't know about you, but for me, that just penetrates right down to my heart. As a human being, I know that I am wired uh, to live for praise, for acceptance, for glory, for affirmation, however you want to put it. Um, we are all set up to have external sources tell us who we are. And, and the question really is, um, where are we going to go to scratch that itch? Do we go to God directly or do we go to people? And, and there's this darkness that we get plunged in when we, we worry about what, what they think, what they will say, the, the invisible they. What are they going to do? And, and so for these people that, that seek praise and affirmation in the wrong place, uh, life becomes dark. It becomes hard. And I think we all know this. When, when we're afraid of what people are going to think about us, it makes us insecure. And even if we uh, get the approval of somebody for, uh, for a period of time, well, we got to work to keep that approval. And if, if I'm doing right by one group, well, that might offend another group. So it's contradictory. It's, it's fickle. It's a hard place to be. But that's not the case for Jesus. Jesus sought praise only from God. That made him secure. And he wanted to, to pave the way to God. And so uh, I'll just continue. Jesus cried out, verse 44, the one who believes in me believes not in me, but him who sent me. And the one who sees me sees him who sent me. So if we believe in God, we get God the Father. We see God the Father when we see Jesus. Jesus says, verse 46, I have come as light into the world so that everyone who believes in me would not remain in darkness. Jesus does not want us to remain in that darkness of seeking praise and approval uh, from the wrong place. And, and so I think especially about this um, cultural moment that we're living in, um, people are seeking, people are scared, people are afraid. And a lot of this comes down to having our, our, our hope placed uh, in what people think of us and, and needing connection and needing affirmation and really being needy. Not being there to, to serve others and to love others and to look to the interests of others, but to see how that they can serve us. But the reason that Jesus is such a marvelous Savior is he's the only person in the history of the world um, that sought to, his, to get his praise and his, his acceptance from God alone. And when we do that, we can love people so well when we don't care what they think about us. That their perception isn't what matters, but it's their soul. It's, 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 it's their well-being. And so, uh, Riverview, I just want to encourage you um, with that this morning. That um, you would seek the praise of the only one who matters. 
He's the only one who got the equation right. Uh, he is the only one who went to the cross to die for us so that we would get vicariously everything that belongs to him. God looks at Jesus with nothing but acceptance and love and favor and grace. And as we put our faith in Jesus once for all time, that's what we have. And so we have this project of continually reminding ourselves um, that, that God loves us. And so we have nothing to prove. We have no one to impress. And then we are then freed to love people, to serve people. Um, I, I just hope that you chew on that this morning, that you would meditate on that truth, um, that if you are accepted by Jesus, you're accepted. If you're okay with God, you are okay. And that, that would fill you up with love and that love would overflow into how you're loving other people. Um, in the meantime, hope you guys are doing well. Uh, so thankful for you. I, I, I do long to see you guys face to face, but in the meantime, I'll keep my distance and I'll keep washing my hands. Love you guys. See you tomorrow.